Born to Mexican immigrant parents from Michoacán, Omar Ramos grew up harvesting fruits and vegetables and raising farm animals in Central California. After developing a passion for sports in high school, Omar decided to pursue a sports communication vocation and attained a mass communication degree at Modesto Junior College and Fresno College. Prior to becoming a radio host for Univision Radio, where he has been the main Spanish play-by-play -play announcer for the major Chicago sports team since 2011, Omar worked for CBS Fresno and KFTV Univision Fresno. He has been nominated twice for the Radio Marconi Award in Washington, D.C. and Austin, Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, Omar Ramos. Buenas noches. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How is everybody tonight so far? Yeah. Viva la raza! <laughs> Are you guys excited? Yeah. It's not even Friday yet and we're excited already. <laughs> Live from the 312 downtown Chicago. Thank you so much. Can you please join me and all of you to put a, make some noise? You guys could have been anywhere else on the planet, but you decided to come out and support this very important movement called Mex Talks 2019. And I'm so excited, so honored, so privileged to be here with all my fellow Mexicanos and Mexican Americans and Latinos from different parts of Latin America and everybody that's not Latino. Thank you so much for showing up as well. <laughs> what is that? Next talk? Is it like TED Talks? But yeah, we stole it too. We stole it. <laughs> also, a special shout out going out to Luis from um, Latinos Progresando. And I just want to touch quickly here how I got involved with Latinos Progresando. So a couple years ago. I was invited to participate in a dance competition. Granted, I only know how to dance bandita and norteñas and all that, right? Growing up in California. And so I said, okay, I'll go ahead and do it. And the whole objective was to dance. It was called Mira Quien Baila Chicago. And the whole objective was to dance. And obviously money raised was going to go towards, you know, uh, organization from the Chicagoland area. So I have a radio show and I was like, you know what? Who should I help? Who should I kind of choose, select? So I went on air. And I was like, damas y caballeros, queremos dejarles saber que vamos a estar haciendo eso para ustedes. Y nos gustaría saber qué fundación no lucrativa les gustaría que beneficiara esta competencia de baile. And I was astonished, I was amazed to see the, the, the young community from Chicago and their tíos and tías and moms and dads. And they called me and they said, you know what? Latinos Progresando has helped my family that migrated from El Salvador, from Guatemala. Uh, from different parts of uh, Mexico, please choose them because we don't have any money to thank them. But if you could do that for us, it'd be like you're making, you'd be making that donation on behalf of us. So please make some noise for Latinos Progresando. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's a good time to be a Latino. And <laughs> I swear it is because it seems like every time you turn on uh, the TV, if you still have a TV, or if you're on your phone, the Latino this and Latino this, and we did that, and we we're marching here, and we're doing that. But I found it so funny the other day, I was uh, kicking off my show, and I had done my show prep, and this thing popped up about a uh, Dia de los Muertos Barbie. So, yeah, <laughs> Mattel, or Mattel, uh, <laughs> has come up with a genius idea right before Halloween to come up with La Barbie del Dia de los Muertos. So I don't know if they need to like up their sales or anything, but it's a pretty clever idea. So by this time, I think by Christmas, we might have like the whole band del recodo Barbies too, you know, going on. <laughs> For sure. So I want to tell you about myself a little bit. I think we all have like a unique story to tell. Um, so I was born in Central California. My parents migrated from the state of Michoacan. Any Michoacanos in the building tonight? <laughs> Yay, there's four of us. <laughs> the other 500,000 are still working, so, yeah. <laughs> in their third job, right? We're not stopped, man. We're, if you need somebody to work for you, call me Chocano. We'll hook it up, man, for sure. So this is what happened, okay? So my parents migrated from Mexico, the Sierra Coast. If you guys ever want to check out a virgin beach, go to La Sierra Costa Michoacana. Straight up, there's no, like, the hotel industry and all that does not exist. Why? Because the government respects the indigenous community in that area. So if you want to check out and you want to go with your bubulubu or your honey bunny or whatever, and you want to go to a virgin beach, 
Michoacan is the place to go, ladies and gentlemen. Don't believe everything you hear. Maybe just the aguacate thing, yeah, for sure. But that's, so my parents migrated, and my shoelaces were coming on tap for some reason. Um, so my parents migrated from Mexico, from the far lands in Mexico, like many families did, to Central California, El Valle de San Joaquin. I was born in this little town called Tulare, California, right outside of Fresno, Central Valley. Central Valley is like the belly button of the state of California. Obviously, we all know it's a big piece of land. So I was born there. I was raised on a ranch, literally, uh, raising chivos, chickens, goats, gallos de pelea, um, and harvesting fruits. You know all those fruits and vegetables, ladies and gentlemen, that you guys uh, buy at the supermarket? A cousin of mine probably picked it, all right? So, and we used to do that uh, to make ends meet, a lot of work. Um, it actually, the struggle was real because it sucked. It sucked because we were working so hard, so hard. And I used to see my mom and my dad partiéndose el alma for little, very little wages. But being a Mexican-American, because I wasn't born in Mexico, I was born on this side, it sucked even more. Why? Because summertime, uh, believe it or not, uh, I used to, you know, all the rest of the kids were always with their summer vacay and all that stuff. And everybody got to go to the water slides in Manteca, California. But guess who had to be on their knees just like this and cutting uvas? Mom. Paso, mijo. Can I talk to you about something? See, si, mijo, what's up? I was wondering if, uh, if I didn't, if I, if I can avoid going to summer school this, this summer. No, oh, mijo, you know, we, I can't leave you at home. You know, I need you to help out here while you can and then go to summer school. I used to think that there was something mentally wrong with me that they would send me to summer school, but it was because my parents didn't have any money to obviously have a babysitter for us. I do remember one time I did ask my mom, if she let me borrow $100 so I could buy some Jordans. You know what she said? <laughs> <laughs> $100 for esas cosas? Look, I'll save you $90. I'll take you to pay less and buy you some pro wings, you know? I used to, I used to pray when I'd go to church because I was an altar boy as well. My parents always had me busy, right, doing stuff. I used to pray for pro wings to go and style because, you know, we didn't have money. <laughs> we didn't have money for anything else. So fast forward, ladies and gentlemen, fast forward. Um, I was a pretty good baseball player. I played baseball in Central California. Um, at a collegiate level, um, shortstop, by the way. And that was kind of my ticket from all that distress that I was going through, right? It sucked that I saw life as something that really sucked because I was bullied as well for being a campesino kid. And there was something that happened in my life, a, a mistake of mine. I got involved in the wrong crowd and I got caught and seeing my mother cry changed my life forever so i got involved in uh, sports i played baseball i got my college done as you heard earlier tonight and i was able to get my first radio job instead of california cbs radio with primo rafa bautista he brings me over to chicago and this opportunity popped up right to become the sports broadcaster for the chicago white Sox. i did my audition le caí bien as guillen uh, so they gave me the opportunity to be a uh, broadcaster in Spanish for the Chicago White Sox. Uh, when Ozzy leaves, it just kind of caused a problem. So then two weeks later, the Chicago Cubs called me. They said, hey, Omar, would you like to come over here? And I was like, yeah, sure, no problem. So I've been doing that. I've been doing the Chicago Bulls. I've been doing the Chicago Fire, the Chicago Bears. And one of the things that uh, brought a lot of pride to me was uh, for the first time ever, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and I want to thank the, the Blackhawks family for believing in La Raza Latina. We did the first ever broadcast en español in the hockey profesional, la verdad. I mean, I know my time is up. I just want to uh, conclude with this. Um, using this platform, the media platform, to work on TV. I'm also a sports anchor on the weekends with Univision Chicago. Um, I'm using this platform nowadays to go to the schools, go to the suburbs, Pilsen, uh, back of the yards, back of the yards, arriba, back of the yards. <laughs> Shout out to Ronaldo, okay? And uh, back of the yards and out of the suburbs because there are so many 
students out there that need somebody to go out there and mentor them and talk to them about your stories, about your struggles and all that, so that they can feel like, you know what, if this local did it, so can I. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your, for your undivided attention. Welcome to Mixed Talks. And do me, do me one last favor. As soon as she walks out, can you please give her a standing ovation? Because we got Angelica Aragon coming up next. Thank you.